Hey guys, welcome to Rock and Roll Rugby, and uh, in today's one, we're actually going to be reacting to a really mouth-watering game. This was on Twi Twickenham. It is England versus Wales. Um, it was a really close encounter, um, and uh, yes, the team was interesting to see that uh, Wales actually had um, Owen Williams start from the Ospreys instead of Bigger. Um, the, the big names was all there, Beard, you name them, they were there, and then they had a pretty strong, strong um, bench as well, with, you know, the likes of a bigger coming up from the bench. Um, from an England point of view, all the big names, uh, Stewart, then the back line, Arundel, uh, Joe Merchant, um, uh, Fun Port Fleet, they played, interestingly enough, also Owen Farrell for this game at 10. Now, uh, Vunipola, um, Itoji, Joe Marler, it was a pretty stacked team, so really, really good team uh, that, that both teams featured, and uh, let's get right into the reaction of this game. Yeah. Sees a bit of space. Cross, Cross kick comes. there from Williams. England. Pulls the mark, oh. and that's a penalty. Henry Arundel is shown a yellow card. Oh, that's cynical. I mean, you're offside. You can't just go and do that. Um, wow. Now, at this point, guys, I mean, these these highlights, I can only react with what is on YouTube as highlights. By this point, it's already 6-0 for England. But don't get it mistaken. It's not like England was dominating the game. They had more possession at the start of the game, I've got to say. I mean, we're already 40 minutes into the game. Um, but even though they had a lot more possession, they could not convert it into points. They tried a few cross kicks. Um, they were threatening at times, but um, I've got to tell you, the defense from the Welsh was outstanding. And you can see when Gatlin goes back to the, the Welsh team, he just knows, he's just comfortable with that team. He knows most of those players. There's a lot of experienced players, last World Cup. And you can see he does a really good, good uh, job with this team. This Welsh team was playing outstandingly well on Twickenham England couldn't get through they, they they were pressing a few times but couldn't break through ah let's keep going trying to get over the ball and it's an advantage Wales hands getting on the ground and there's going to be a warning now perhaps even more it is it's a yellow card oh and a yellow card he's in there with the tackle yeah not on his feet not on his feet so there comes the first yellow. Now let me tell you, in this game, there was a lot of cards. A lot of cards. So now 43 minutes in. And that scrum turning. And this I also want to mention just quickly, as I'll go back to it now, uh, to the highlights. But i got to tell you that... Um, Wales had the better of England um, in the front back, in the set piece, and scrums especially, um, for the most part. You know, there was a few few that England won, but I was surprised to see how strong the Welsh was um, up front on the set piece versus uh, England. They were really, really good. Thomas Williams looking to get on with it. And there, well, the Welsh get their first points on the board with a bit of luck. <laughs> and there you see again Welsh getting the better of them in the scrum and that's the thing oh and here comes a beautiful cross kick and He's been taken in the air. And Liam Williams has got the try. And the Welsh not happy about that. That's a penalty try. Yellow card. Off the field. And guys, but I mean, what? there's no ways that you can do that. But he knew. It's either that he was taking the chance. Because he, I think he kind of knew. If, if I'm not going to take this guy, um, that will be a try. But I mean, if you just look, what I found interesting is, you know, um, from an English point of view, they, they definitely have some question marks around that scrum. Gensh was struggling, got a card. Um, and at this point, England in trouble. I mean, it's just cards. Like, they got uh, Freddie Stewart and Gensh off. 
Um, and yes, not looking great at set piece. Uh, maybe a head like on the scoreboard, but definitely not in the game really. In possession, Farrell threads it through. That's a good kick. That goes Williams. Williams will look to counter it. Oh, Williams with a beautiful counter run, yeah. Well taken by Shunter. Oh, beautiful. This, this is beautiful rugby from Wales. Oh, and there's a high tackle there. Oh, it's a shoulder by w Farrell, Farrell Williams. Owen oh, Farrell. Farrell Williams, I went Farrell. So let's see. It's a, it's a clear, clear high tackle. Okay. Well, that's a minimum of a yellow card. Okay. And goes for off the review, right? And again, yeah, guys. I mean, this is the captain. I mean, has not been off the field. And yeah. Yeah, is the, the opportunity for Tom Wales. Williams what a run. And Williams, will get the try. Yeah. Williams gets it. And what I find interesting here, guys, just, just look at the, the speed. There's, for me, a lack of speed in this England backline. I might be wrong, but I think there's a little bit of a lack of speed, speed in this backline, you know. Um, for me, it looked like there was a little bit of a lack of speed the whole game in the backline um, from, from England. I know a lot of English fans will probably not agree with me, but I, I, I'm not personally a big fan Merchant I like on 13, but Oli uh, Oli Lawrence is just seems a bit slow. He looks like a, a sometimes like a a loose trio type player, like a loose forward player trying to play in the back. He's just not got the pace. I mean, when Wales br broke away there, there was just no one there to catch them. Um, I think in general we're 67 minutes in. Just let me give a few more comments before we get back in the game. But what I found is for me, um, England was doing winning the backline battle in many ways because what they were doing super super well is the cross kicks you know the cross kicks kind of finding their wings kind of uh looking for the space behind looking for the space behind the backline the welsh backline and putting the welsh under pressure in that backline with the, the clever little kicks through where i felt england was struggling for most of the games was up front um they they were struggling with set piece. They weren't great with set piece. It, it wasn't a very uh, disciplined performance. A lot of cards being given away. And you'd feel for the most part, you know, the Welsh was actually looking like the better team on the field. Up to this point, line out, rolling mall for England, and they do it. It's a penalty advantage to England. This will be quite a moment. All packing in there. And the try is there, and England scores. And uh, this was really needed from England at this point, because they were kind of looking like they were falling out of the game. And they got it back with this try. Itoji. Farrell's yellow card. So after reviewing, Farrell going to a red, and now he'll go for a review, and he could be out for games now. Um, this is the risk with warm-up games just before World Cup, and you know what he means to the England side. Now, Wales leading by one, and there's only six minutes left. English looking much better in this scrum, really improving now. Oh, and this looks much better from England towards the end. And that is 75 minutes in. Now guys, let me just say as he's going to take this penalty, I think this is something we have to realize in this World Cup. The games are going to be blown to shreds. Um, rugby's become one of these games where, you know... <laughs> you got to be so careful. You can get a penalty for just about everything. So it's going to be so influenced by red cards and yellow cards. I don't know how many cards we're going to see at this World Cup, but I think it's going to be a lot. Because you could see in this game your typical test match, but so many penalties, man. And, and, and uh, as much as it is all penalties, you can't say anything about it. Most of it is, is right, but it kills the game in so many ways you don't see a real flowing type games there's always penalties everywhere 
But with that said, it's always tight with these type of games between Wales and England. I don't know. England was down to 13 men, men at one point. Um, Wales was trailing for a long time in the game, so I guess they had that point de deficit. But man, you you would have felt that uh, Wales, you know, would would kick themselves that you know they allowed England back in this game. Nerveless from George Ford. The intervention, which has certainly won the match. And that's it. Forward and England wins. Okay, yeah. So, what do we make of this, guys? What What do we make of this uh, this game? I don't know. For me, I feel that is it convincing from England? Not in my opinion. Like, um, I think the Welsh came out to play. They could have won this match, and England, for the most part in this game, was struggling with a lot of little pieces of their game. Um, I am not convinced yet. I'm not saying it's the when, when, when looking at that pool, I think everyone's saying, yeah, it's going to be England and Fiji in that pool, England and Fiji. You cannot disregard this Wales side. They've still got all their big men in there, their big names. Um, they still got a lot of experience and with a very experienced coach that know them very well in Gatland. And I do think even though England has, has got the tick on the board, if you could put it that, it was at home and it was super close, probably too close for comfort. So... I wouldn't go into this World Cup saying they can be comfortable. Um, but in my opinion, I still think even though Fiji's coming up nicely, uh, this, this, this pool I still feel would probably be a 1-2 um, England and Wales. I'm almost starting to lean to say Wales-England. Wales topping this pool. Many won't agree with me. That's obviously English fans. But when I'm looking at the overall performances by both these teams so far, Man, don't write off this this, this Welsh team. I, I think they're finding decent form just before World Cup. And they're playing that type of game that we've seen from them in Six Nations in the last, say, two years. They've got a good foundation of players. A lot of experience still there. And I wouldn't write them off to still be a really, really um, competitive side for this World Cup on the, if you like it or not, the lighter side of the pools. Um, or the playoffs because we know only in the semis does most of the heavier weights top tier teams in the top five start playing against the others from six down so um yeah still still whilst whilst don't write them off they also have a good shot at this world cup to to make some damage guys if you enjoyed my reaction to this video um just firstly thousand subscribers we've done it so Every single one of you that watch these videos of mine, um, that's helped me get here. I want to personally thank, we've made that thousand subscriber mark. Thanks so much to all of you. And yeah, on we go. Now it's 2,000, 3,000. Here we go. I, I'm, we're not stopping. So um, if you enjoyed this and, and you also felt you got some value out of this, please hit the subscribe button still because we got to keep growing, man. And um, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks so much. Bye.